Hey everybody back and this video is going to show how I wired the generator interlock kit so that I'm able to plug a generator in to the outlet that we installed on the outside of our house. The power comes in to the breaker and rather than having a external transfer switch either in the basement or on the outside of the house where the switch is, we utilize the circuit breaker panel itself and if you're if you're familiar with reverse feeding it's sort of like that but this is the legal way to do it you get a little you'll see in the video but totally legal totally safe um, you do want to run surge protectors and stuff like that on your sensitive electronics but this is a good way to do it so you don't back feed the power power through your utility wires so when they come turn your power back on you don't fry the people working on it or anything in your house so anyways here I'm just make taking the knockout out for this is where the wire will be fished in and it's one of those two size deals so it's kind of taking me a little bit got to get the burrs off there it'll take a half inch or three quarter and I had to knock out both rings this one I believe is a three quarter might be one inch I'm not sure but it's six gauge wire so it's it's a larger one anyhow, but get that tightened up. I've got my wire coming in. I've got a video on here that I showed how I ran that outlet on the outside of the house and the wire as well. If you want to check that out, um, this, so the wire that I'm working with right now is coming from that outlet and that's where the generator will plug in to feed power into the house. So, if you haven't seen those videos, go check them out. And shout out some guy on YouTube, EP, with a guitar profile picture. I kind of left this series dead in the water because it was super frustrating to make. As you can see, this is all shot one take, one video. And I just did some minor editing to make it make sense. So sorry if you can't see stuff real well. Um, you saw me take a rubber mallet there and shut off the power. I just do that because well, I'm kind of a baby. Also, those at the 200 amp switch, it's, it, it's hard to throw. So when you have something that you can kind of get on there and put your weight behind it, definitely helps a lot. If you get just your thumb on there, it's hard. Plus, there's not much place to hold on to. So the power is off in the house right now, but there's still power coming into the top side of that breaker in the middle with the yellow circle star sticker on it. So that's all energized above there. I'm uh, working on the neutral wire and the ground wire goes on that rail uh, as well. Okay, again, I shouldn't have wore a hat. That doesn't help, but as I move my head, you can see that 50 amp breaker there on the top right. That's the one that the power will be coming into off the generator. So the red and black wire are hot um, on a 50 amp outlet. So it doesn't matter. You can interchange those on the breaker. They're both hot. The white one is the neutral. So that goes up to your rail with all your other white wires from your house. And then now I'm remembering, oh, whoops, I forgot to put the ground in there. So crimp that. Uh, I think I had to, I'm pretty sure I have to take the white one out to make it make sense to fit in there. Whoever wired this box originally with the house did a good job of keeping it nice and neat. So I'm trying to, as I change things, be mindful of that as well. So. I'll make another video after this, kind of just showing everything rather than having one camera shot zooming in and zooming out and having my big fat head in the way. You'll be able to get a better picture, but this is me actually doing the work, wiring it up. So if you have any questions, let me know. Now, I'm, every, all the wiring's done at this point. So now 
I don't know what this screw is. It must hold that breaker or just be a part of the rail. But you take that out and you add this little plate. It's part of the interlock kit. It comes with the interlock kit. And basically it's got a warning sticker on there so that when you have the breaker off or uh, the front panel off, you can still see that there's something going on with that circuit. It's not a normal circuit. It, it could be potentially back feeding um, and supplying the power. So it's got a warning on there and then it's also screwed in so that it, you can't get at those wires that are feeding it. So in case somebody takes the front of your breaker off, it's got an extra warning in there. You'll see later there's warnings on the breaker uh, outside as well. I'm just tightening everything up up there with that uh, wire nut. Turning the power back on. You can see I had to really put my shoulder back into it. I mean, I'm not a baby. I'm not like super weak or anything, but I don't like to do it halfway. And <laughs> yeah, whatever. The, that was rare. You saw me reading the instructions on the interlock kit right there. Um, now, double check. It's confusing because you it comes with a template to draw to uh, for the screw holes. There, it, look, instructions again. So that's a template in my hand. So make sure you put it in the right spot. Look, I'm checking again. Measure three times, cut once, maybe four times. And that's the actual thing that the interlock mechanism, I guess you call it. And then, so you take that template that comes with the, the kit. I'm marking the holes where this, that'll hold the, the slide. You'll see later, this is all makes sense. So marking those holes, you mark it on the inside, what would be the inside of that that panel. So like, yeah, that's the back side of it. Now just drill those holes. Oh, by the way, this is a stupid way to do it. I should not be leaning a metal thing on all those breakers that are live. But I was very aware that I was not going to do this video twice. And I just wanted it to be in the frame. So I didn't care. I didn't care if I got zapped. I was so sick of doing this stuff. Like I said, this weekend I did it was super cold. I was super frustrated. Obviously not cold in the basement, but there's a lot of work outside. Oh, and I broke the hinge somehow on the door. That's a pain. It's really hard to find those in singles. You can find like thousand packs for contractors and stuff. But really hard to find one. I still haven't found one. So that's me trying to fix the hinge. And I actually broke it more. It's like probably a one cent piece that I can't find. So you you can kind of see the, the holes are there for the the slider. I think I'll zoom in here in a minute. And so you can see a little bit better. But no, you just thread those screws through. They kind of self-tap in. And I think there's nuts on the back of them. And you don't want to get them too tight. You just want to get them snug enough so that it still slides. And what that does is it only lets one of those, either your main breaker coming from the utility or the 50 amp breaker that we installed for the generator to be on or in the powered position at one time. So that slides up and down and it won't allow you to have the utility on while you have the generator on. So it's like, uh, I guess, I think they call it a mechanical interlock kit. So like mechanically you can, like it's impossible to have them both on unless you rip that piece off, which would void the, um, it being a legal part. What? So I'm, I'm told, I, I don't check with, uh, house inspectors or anything, but I'm told that if I go to sell the house, this would be totally legal to have in there. I don't know why it wouldn't be. It should be super safe. You can't, with this little kit installed on there, it shouldn't matter. Super slick rather than put, you know, a few hundred dollars into a transfer switch that's going to be on the outside of the house or um, whatever. Plus this way you don't have to run separate extension cords or um, 
even a sub panel or extra breakers or anything like that. It's really nice. You just flip one switch and everything in your house has power. And if you're smart, you just won't run stupid things like stuff you don't need during a power outage and overload your generator. We have well water and a septic here, so it's kind of important that we have stuff. See, you can see it now. The house is in main, or uh, the house has been powered by the main up top. And so it would not allow me to turn that bottom um, circuit on. Here I'm remarking the, the panel because I had to move those two circuits from the from the top down to the bottom to make room for that 50 amper. And there's a video on that. Uh, I'm putting another warning sticker on. So I think three warning stickers plus that deal underneath the bottom or underneath the back of the panel. All done. My niece and nephew gave me that shirt. And I harass them with pictures of it every time I wear it. And there is the dealio yo super simple super cheap not super cheap it's like 55 bucks which is seems silly for a little piece of metal but it's a lot cheaper than i guess the alternative of an external transfer switch okay thanks uh thanks for the people that commented and asked me more questions because it gives me the motivation to actually show you these videos okay bye bye